subscribing and leaving comments. some skeptics. Well, if you have the slightest bit of a leaning that you might think there really is something like a Bigfoot up in the high country in Northern California, then our next guest in his book, My Travels with Bigfoot, just might push you into being a real true believer. Will you welcome, please, the author of this book, Charles W. Edson. Here is the man who has come face to face with Bigfoot. Is that true? That's true. But that wasn't the first time you had any evidence of Bigfoot. Ross here is holding a plaster cast. In 1952, you ran across some tracks, didn't you? Let me put my foot up to show the difference in size. Wow. Yeah, and this is the plaster. Charles, in 1952, you, you ran into tracks, correct? Right. Were you a believer at that time? No. I used to hunt and uh, hunted bear and deer and... I was quite a hunter. Almost made my life out of it when I was younger. And uh, then when I went run on these tracks, well, that kind of changed things a little bit. That's all. Did I, you know what they were when you first saw No, them? I didn't. I thought somebody was pulling a joke on me, and I seen uh, many tracks like this, a lot smaller, and some even bigger. And uh, But uh, it kind of turned me to just tracking Bigfoot. And this, this is 1952, and it wasn't fashionable to... Uh, Right. to look for Bigfoot. Now, now, Bigfoot is known as Bigfoot and Sasquatch, but what's the Indian name for Bigfoot? Uh, uh, the Indian name here in Northern California is Maraca Ra Ra. That's the name. They call that, uh, that's a giant mountain creature. But now, in 1952, you saw the tracks, but you didn't see Bigfoot then. When did you first sight Bigfoot? Well, this was in 1954. I tracked these tracks here you're looking at. They're similar to this, and... Uh, uh, these were made. These casts are made from real tracks. Uh, the creature let on the, in the ground. And uh, in 1952, uh, I started tracking these for two years, studying them, and and finally convinced. And uh, then 1954, I seen the creature itself. Tell us about and, the first uh, time you saw him. What was it like? Well, it was uh, it was unbelievable. I couldn't. Uh, it's hard to uh, say what it really looked like. Kind of scary to see something like that out in the woods that big. And How far first, were you when you first saw Well, I was about maybe a half a mile at the first, real first time. Then down about 200 yards when I really did see him in a good... Uh, oh, now, what did he look like? Well, it looked just like a, a big, hairy a man. Uh, it walked upright and uh, didn't stoop over. And... Uh, it uh, just uh, walked just like a human being, other than uh, it had a lot of hair. Now, the picture we're seeing right now <clears throat> is uh, is a picture that you took. Right. Uh -huh. Not on your first sighting, but on one of your many yes. sightings. Mm -hmm. And he's walking away from the camera. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, this uh, picture here, I, I was just coming over a hill. I knew he was in the area. I've been uh, tracking its uh, own tracks, and, uh, and I happened to see it, and uh, I caught the, the film. I always carried a camera with me after many times I didn't have one. Now, Charles, there's got to be a lot of skeptics. Uh, in our audience, we asked how many people believe in Bigfoot, and there were there were six or seven folks who said they don't. How do you know people didn't dress up in a, in a big furry outfit and uh, let you take their picture and then head off into the woods? Well, they were a fool if they did, because uh, I'd hate to be up there in a the furry outfit. Somebody, uh, Someone might get shot at you. Yeah, sure. right, really. Uh, but uh, I thought this when I first uh, seen the creature, but uh, after many times and researching it, uh, I was convinced. Now, Barbara, do you have? Do you feel any better about Bigfoot now? You were a skeptic. Mm -hmm. Are you still a skeptic? I'm still a skeptic. I'm sorry. Why, Barbara? Maybe I have no imagination. Do you think it's not possible for a creature like this, of this size, to, to live in, uh, in Northern California? Because maybe we're too domestic now? I think that uh, that's just not possible. I just can't believe that there's a creature that looks like that that uh, most of us haven't seen with the hiking that goes on and uh, people are everywhere. 
we need uh, skeptics. This is how we learn uh, other details, you know, how to hunt. And uh, but there's like the case of the Japanese uh, man there in Guam. Uh, he was gone from since the war days, clear up to uh, what was it, two years ago when he thirty-two years. Yes, he was in that and cave. he lived off the the, the you know the, the ground there and you know, what grew. And uh, this thing here, uh, the theory is now that it come over from Russia, possibly from Russia, and uh, maybe five thousand years ago, and uh, it landed here and. Uh, and it's just roaming the hills. It used to be down where where we live, but it got uh, pushed up in the hills from the campers, the hunters, the loggers, the miners, or whatever have you. It came from Russia. How does he elude anyone <clears throat> who was hunting him? How does he elude? Well, it's the same as a bear or a cougar. Uh, there's been many a big buck, uh, deer that uh, nobody's ever shot in how many years they've been alive with, let's say, eight points or ten points. And they're still there. You'll see them up there in the wintertime, falling around the snow. And this thing has uh, got a brain. It's got a brain of a human. Yeah, but he's only one? No, there's more than one. Mm -hmm. no. Jill? What do you think it evolves from? Because it's so big, it can't be just any ordinary, you know, like a bear. Or what it, I don't know what it looks like, but it can't be a bear or anything. That no, it's a, it's a, a human-like creature. It's got the animal instinct in it because it's been living up in that environment. And uh, you'd possibly uh, get an animal instinct in you if you was uh, to live up there in uh, that environment that many years. Michelle, how old is he? How old? Yeah. Oh, I don't know how old it is. It's probably got a lifespan similar to ours, and there's more than one, so they're having their young ones. How, how many are there up in Northern there's California? There's about six of them in Northern California. All the same family? I mean, uh, possibly. I've seen them together at one time. It's almost like a herd. And do they migrate? Colony. Yes, they migrate. Ah. Mm -hmm. Ed. Yes, you say it's in Northern California. Are there any other parts of the world where these creatures are located? Yes, uh, they're all over. Uh, like I say, thousands of years ago, they probably uh, come over here, and, and maybe there was 10,000 of them. Now it dwindled down from, you know, possibly death, you know. And uh, uh, there, uh, there's some in Alaska. Have you tracked any in Alaska? Canada, yes, I've researched all over in uh, Canada, Oregon, Washington, and uh, but this is the main, uh, most part of the country I've uh, researched because of where I lived. I've lived up in this country all my life. Charles was saying, uh, who read in his book and all the material we read beforehand, that lots of times when you go hunting, you'll take hunting dogs with you. Well, hunting dogs are repelled <clears throat> by Bigfoot by a very interesting reason. We're going to tell you what that reason is right after this. Stay tuned of Bigfoot this morning from a man who's seen him face to face and as we went to commercial break Ross asked him about the reason that hunting dogs are repelled by Bigfoot why is that they have a, a real bad odor and uh, it's just like any other animal they have an odor this odor this uh, creature carries uh, also fights off uh, their predators and uh, that's probably the main reason uh, like a skunk uh, a deer has a, a very bad odor uh, just about any animal has a certain type of odor, but uh, it's like a defense mechanism. Yeah, I, I believe so. I mean, you say it's even to the point. The stink of Bigfoot to gag you. It's bad. It's really bad. Uh, there's been many, <laughs> many hunters have come up and uh, and uh, asked me if uh, they describe certain types of odors and asked me if I thought that could have been the creature. And it could have been. Uh, I'd have to smell it myself. I'm, I've lived with it. I've been up there. In fact, I probably smell like it, too. No. <laughs> We've got a lot of questions in the audience. Yes, Susan. Where was the exact location where you spotted him, like where you could really see him? Well, it wasn't on a boulevard, but uh, it was up in Northern California. Um, you know where the Trinities are, the Trinity Alps and uh, uh, Salmon River country. And uh, I heard something about you said you backpack. Yeah. Um, yeah. How high up was he? Was he was he on top, or can he not function up there? No, he he. That's where he is now. They're way back up in the mountains because the population, uh, the fishermen, hunters, and everything, motorcycles, the whole works up there, pushing them back, and everybody else that are trying to research them at the same time. So he's way back in there. It's up there in the Klamath River country. Art, you had a question. How does uh, six million dollar man? You see him fighting uh, the the man, you know, and is that is that where they got that idea from? Is Possibly, but uh, this uh, this creature here don't fight humans. Uh, it's it's surprisingly scared of a human. 
You believe it's actually non-violent. It well, is non-violent. Well, Cheryl had a question to go along with yeah, that. Um, I was wondering if, um, about the reaction that the animal had when, let's say, between you, yourself, and Bigfoot, uh, what was Bigfoot's reaction to you? I mean, did he stand there and just look or oh, run, turn around and Certain look? times I can go on and on and tell you a different time because I did research his reactions very thoroughly. And, uh, but uh, he, he'd uh, stand there and watch me. And uh, I, I, I kind of researched if he was scared of me or, you know, if I was scared if I'd played sick or something and sat down or, or laid down if he would come to my aid or something. No, uh, he, he's, not, he's not that quite sharp in his brain, uh, but it might be from, you know, he don't know our ways like we don't know his ways. Can yeah. his ways. You say that there are about six big... Yes. Big feet. Big feet. Big feet. In Northern California. Do you always encounter the same one, or have you encountered uh, different ones at different times, and can you distinguish the difference between them? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, sometimes. Depends on the distance that I've seen them. Uh, I, I know there's a, a female, uh, the one Roger Patterson, the picture Roger Patterson took, and has a, a breast just like a female, but the whole body is still covered with hair, uh, the male and the female. Now there's a... There's also a young one. Uh, I believe it's uh, the daughter. No, uh, uh, it's in the male department. Uh, I can't. I couldn't tell. I, I've been trying to research that. Andrew, oh, excuse oh. me. I had a, um, about the last time a movie called Prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that the movie Possibly in ways, but uh, everybody thinks this creature, you know, goes around killing people and tearing up things. It don't. The only thing it tears up is probably the logging equipment they have up there, you know, to spoil their habitat. And and uh, as far as the uh, hurting people, I've never heard of it hurting anybody other than you know what I hear from some people that you know. Well, you had kind believe. of an interesting experience <clears throat> in, while you were in your truck. Yes, well, I was up there, uh, I'd done a lot of logging in my days, and uh, I was up there uh, hauling logs, and I'd, I'd been parked up there in the woods and waiting for a lot of, a load of logs, and uh, this thing c come off the hill and started hammering on my truck, and I thought it was trying to get to me, you know, open the door or something, but I just, quick reaction, jumped to the floor, and he hammered on the, the fenders and the hood of my truck, and... Uh, then it left and turned and went on down the hill. You, well, uh, the thing that started that was the noise of this uh, fellow's chainsaw up on the hill. And, uh, and that's what made it vicious. They don't like that noise and don't like metal. In fact, you get to a point where you wouldn't even take your rifle. You oh, no man-made machinery take Right, right, just kind of that. that. You brought this, Charles, and I think we ought to talk about this. What <clears throat> exactly is this? It, uh, I, w I want it said someday I was the first one that, that said it's possible because I have a lot of uh, uh, clues on this. I found uh, moss and, and uh, sap, and there's some clay in, the, in these uh, lean-to type caves. Uh, this is a resting area for these creatures, and uh, this was found in a lot of the caves, found on brush. Where it, now, possibly this was uh, uh, used as uh, something to keep warm in the winter, and. Uh, uh, How would they, they do it? You mean they probably stick it on them and uh, with sap yes, first, and then sap. they stick the moss yes. on. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, it's possible now because I found this. And how else would it be sitting in uh, caves and stuff like that? But uh, why not? Uh,
enjoying all this rare and unique content, please show your support by subscribing and leaving comments.